Good Friday, Longhorns. Welcome back to an all-new UTV show. Today is Friday, September the 22nd. Coming up on this week's broadcast, we'll tell you how can you get community service hours while helping the community alongside the Webb County Sheriff's Office. Plus, our principal, Mr. Aleman, was selected to represent United High School in the Real Man Wear Pink campaign. All that and more, so let's get started. I'm Jose Pepe Arrasola. And I'm Lisandra Vasquez. And this is what's happening in Longhorn Nation. With Breast Cancer Awareness Month right around the corner, Mr. Aleman has been selected as one of the 13 men around our county to represent the Real Men Wear Pain campaign. He is getting a jump start on the awareness campaign right here on our campus. It's an honor uh, to be inducted into Real Men Wear Pink because uh, the principals of the main high schools and UISD were, were picked, uh, as well as others from uh, LISD. Uh, as leaders in our educational community, I, I think uh, it's a uh, responsibility for us to be part of a, a campaign uh, that, that does uh, so much for uh, cancer awareness and to raise funds for this uh, research. And to let people know about cancer and the devastating effects of this disease and also to raise money to one day eradicate through research uh, what, what devastates so, so many families uh, when people do get cancer. Right now, our Longhorn students are able to contribute by donating $1 to your second period teacher. 100% of the proceeds will go towards helping to find a cure for this important cause. Uh, I would like to encourage all our, our students and, and faculty to be a part of, of this campaign and to raise money for the, the cancer awareness. If you want more information about this program or donations for this cause, you can go by the front office and speak to Ms. Patty Martinez. Our TAFE leaders were recognized this past Wednesday at a UISD board meeting at the SAC. Jose Arrasola and Mariana Flores were both recognized for their hard work at the 2017 Educators Rising National Conference in Phoenix, Arizona this past June. Both took top 10 places in three different competitions. TAFE President Jose Pepe Arrasola was also selected to represent UISD and the state of Texas nationally as an Educational Rising National Ambassador. Congratulations to you both on your hard work. The Webb County Sheriff's Office will be hosting their sixth annual Sheriff Bear Drive to benefit children who have experienced very unfortunate events as a result of crimes or natural disasters. Kickoff will be Saturday, September 23rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Build a Bear located inside Mall del Norte. It's Free Art Friday. What exactly does that mean? With more is Robbie Maldonado, who visited Mr. Gomez on how United participates. Can you tell us what Free Art Friday is? Well, Free Art Friday is a, an artist movement that is in many cities. And um, in Laredo, um, artists will leave artwork out for people to find on Fridays. Uh, and the way that they, the artists want you to look for this artwork is uh, using the hashtag LDO Fair Friday. Uh, and uh, you know through Instagram through Facebook any of those right and here in United um, What we do is we want to promote the event and uh, the way that we do that is right outside my classroom There is an area that has a, a sign that says free or Friday and any artwork that is there on Fridays is uh, Up for grabs. so uh, any of the artwork there you can take on our on Friday Remember there's a designated wall for free art that you can take and it is clearly marked Please do not take art from any other area. Attention students, there is going to be an Alzheimer's walk next week on Saturday, September the 30th. You can register by showing up to TAMU at 8 a.m. There will be a ceremony at 9 a.m. and the walk will begin right after 9.30 a.m. Go out and make a difference. Who will you walk for? Our senior class will be selling a 2018 senior tour shirt all next week. You can pre-order yours for $15 during A and B lunch as well as in room C128 with Mr. Rico. This is only for a limited time senior, so order yours today. And remember, you cannot be a part of the senior walk unless you have the t-shirt. Next weekend is already October, and you know what that means. Halloween themed everything. On October 5th, there will be a paranormal art show open to the public. It will be held at the Center for the Arts downtown, and it's free. Here are some examples of what you'll get to see. If you're into all the ghouls and goblins of October, this may be up your alley. 
If you want more information about the show, go by room E130 with Mr. Gomez. Our UIL sponsor, Ms. Rodriguez, will be selling UIL shirts out of the library. It's their Long Run for Life shirt and is being sold for $20. Sizes small to 2XL are available now. For more information, stop by the library. Laredo may soon have a new baseball team. With more is Robbie Maldonado in Local Laredo. Good Friday, Longhorns. I'm Robert Maldonado, and this is what's going on in your city. First up, a fire broke out this Monday in Pueblo Nuevo Colonia off of Highway 359. The fire occurred in a warehouse owned by a local church. The warehouse was used to store tools and farming equipment, which were all lost in the fire. The fire was quickly put out, and nobody was hurt. According to the pastor of the church, Pastor Luis de Leon, he says the building will most likely be demolished and the cause of the fire is yet unknown. In other news, U.S. Representative Henry Cuellar announced last Friday a grant for nearly $6 million in order to be used for improvements at the Laredo International Airport. The improvements will include the installation of airfield guidance signs, the widening of the existing taxiway, and the rehabilitation of the cargo apron to maintain the structural integrity of the pavement. Finally, a new minor league baseball team might be on its way to Laredo. City Council held a meeting on Monday where members discussed whether or not the city would enter into negotiations and sign a letter of intent with a team in the AAA minor league in Mexico called Liga Mexicana. If this item moves forward, after a vote, the team will play at the UniTrade Stadium. This has been your local news. I'm Robert Maldonado. Have a great weekend. Up next, a missing child case was solved, but not without a help from a TV show. With more is Andrea Vasquez in your national news. Hello Longhorns, I'm Andrea Vasquez and this is your weekly national update. A mother who was accused of abducting her son almost three years ago was arrested the day after her case was shown on the TV show, The Hunt with John Walsh. The boy was taken by his mother, Maria Gutierrez, while his parents were undergoing a custody battle. He was found years later by the police in Austin, Texas, thousands of miles away from his home. A family from Arizona is demanding an apology from the policeman who pinned their autistic 14-year-old son to the ground. According to the police on duty, the boy was moving his hand to his face in a manner consistent with inhaling, which led him to believe he was under the influence of drugs, causing him to take action and arrest the boy. His caretaker showed up and explained to the officer that the boy was stimming, an action that calms him down, but the officer would not let go of the child. The family is planning to sue the BPD for not properly training their officers, but the chief on police says that there was nothing wrong with what the officer did. This was your weekly national news rundown. Until next time, and remember guys, stay updated. Mexico's earthquake, Trump's UN speech, and money in toilets. With more is Alex Aguilar in your world news. Good Friday, Longhorns. I'm Alex Aguilar, and this is World News. A major 7.1 magnitude earthquake just hit Mexico on Tuesday. It is estimated that there has been over 230 casualties so far. Three days of nationwide mourning was declared by Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto. This earthquake is the deadliest one since 1985. Rescue efforts are underway and are saving as many people as they can find. Trump also gave his speech at UN meeting this Tuesday. In the speech, he ridiculed Iran and the nuclear deal, which was meant to limit Iran's nuclear abilities. He also spoke of how all nations should take care of their own people first. He said, quote, I will always put America first. In the speech, he also threatened North Korea, saying that America would totally destroy North Korea if need be. In funnier news, two Swiss men clogged the toilets around Geneva on Tuesday. They clogged the toilets with none other than 120,000 euros in 500 euro notes. Prosecutors are currently investigating the motives behind these actions. They are looking into whether the flush cash is linked to any criminal activity. This has been your weekly world news. Remember, when in doubt, spoot out. Now back to you. 
And here with your weekly weather forecast is Marina Rey. Good Friday, Longhorns. My name is Marina Reina, and welcome to your weekly weather forecast. Now, starting off on this Sunday, we'll start to see a hot start with highs of 97 and lows of 75. And this will stay almost consistent for the rest of the week with slow drops in the high all the way down to 92. And this slight cool down will be up until about Thursday and Friday, where we'll have a chance for some rain and winds. And while it may seem like your typical Laredo heat, we will have a chance for some well-deserved showers. Thank you, Longhorns, for watching this week's weather forecast. See you next time. Now back to you. And now with your Longhorn Sports, Lilu Placencia and Christopher Fine. Good Friday, Longhorns. I'm Isaac Fine. And I'm Lilu Juarez. And we'll be your sports anchors this semester for your UTV. We begin the breakdown of the first three football games of the season. Our Longhorns started the season in the Valley against the San Benito Greyhounds. We start off the game with number 10, Wyo Huerta completing a 43 yard pass to number one, Chris Fine. Later on in the second quarter, number 22, Isaac Velasquez, makes it to the end zone for six. Ultimately, our Longhorns were defeated with a score of 23 to 20. The following week, the Longhorns played against the San Antonio Rattlers. The Horns weren't able to capitalize in the run or passing game and lost 3 to 21. However, they learned from their experience for week three's game against the San Antonio Stevens. In the end, the Longhorns came away with their first win of the season with a dominating score of 45 to 10. And now, on to volleyball. The Lady Longhorns have won their first three consecutive district games, holding a strong streak. <laughs> they started their district fight with LBJ and were able to hit Dig and ace their way to a victory in G6. This week, on Tuesday, our Lady Longhorns took on San Antonio Southwest. They started out playing strong defense and making enough aces to win their first set. The second and third sets were pretty evenly matched, but our ladies ultimately pulled out the win. They are now 3-0 starting district play. Congratulations, ladies, on a well-played game. That's it for sports. I'm Lilu Juarez. And I'm Isaac Fine. See, See you next, next Friday, Friday Longhorns. Longhorns. United High School has a lot of potential to share. Around the horn, make sure we find that talent. Let's see who Ashley and Gilbert found this week. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley. And I'm Gilbert. And, and this, this is, is Longhorn Spotlight. Spotlight. This Wednesday, Roberto Ponce, a senior, was selected for Youth of the Month. I introduce our outstanding United High School Youth of the Month, Robert Ponce. As I can be, I really wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for uh, a group of very, uh, a large group of people. We, we have a big responsibility to sort of be those those leaders and those uh, those individuals that that really show others what exactly it means to, to have leadership, to, to leave an impact on the community, and and to really just be uh, great citizens and, and members of, of our respective uh, schools. Roberto Ponce is the president of National Honor Society, vice president of robotics, and a member of the student advisory. Roberto even has started his own club outside of school. Let's take a look. Actually one that I started outside of school, which is called uh, the Youth Science Leaders of Laredo. And basically uh, what the organization does is it does uh, several science related activities that um, work to benefit the community. Roberto is also the president of the Webb County Young Democrats and an organization in which they advocate the philosophies of the Democratic Party. Roberto's dream school is to attend Harvard where he hopes to study physics, mathematics, or computer science. In the summer, Roberto even went to Canada to study physics as well as engineering at TAMU. That's all for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Will, Will you, you be on, on the spotlight? spotlight? Did you travel into culinary? In an all-new segment this year, we're taking you In the Kitchen with Jesse Herrera. Good Friday Longhorns, my name is Jesse Arella and I would be taking you into the kitchen. Today I would be showing you how to make a food bowl, good for any special occasion. First off, you must get your fruits that you are going to use. We would be using strawberries, grapes, plums, peaches, melon, and watermelon. Once you have the fruit, you need to cut the fruits into small pieces. Next you can put your fruits on separate plates like I've already done. 
Then, once all your fruits are cut, you can layer them in a bowl. You can add any toppings you like to the fruit. I want to thank you for letting me take you into the kitchen. And until next time, this has been Jesse wishing you a great weekend. Now, back to you. And here with What's Trending is Luis Mendez and Isabella Ortiz. Hi, Longhorns. I'm Luis Mendez. And I'm Isabella Ortiz. Today, we're talking about a really weird yet interesting trend that has been taking over Instagram for the past week. This trend consists of recording yourself pretending like you're going to do something that you're not. Kind of. <laughs> this is called the Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover Challenge. Let us demonstrate. Wait, did you actually think I was going to demonstrate? Don't judge a book by its cover. The second trend for this week is the newest version of iOS for iPhone. Every iPhone user is going crazy for the new iOS 11. Some of the new features of the iOS 11 are revamped control center, updated design elements, drag and drop, iPad dock, Siri improvements, peer-to-peer -peer Apple Pay, and do not disturb driving mode. This iOS came out four days ago. Some love it and some hate it, but you would have to find out yourself. We hope you enjoyed our show. Make sure to stay fierce. And trendy. Now back to you. Hi, I'm Renan. Due to technical difficulties, me and my co-host Hector were unable to make it in the three-dimensional form. With that said, enjoy. Have you ever wanted to speak to a robot? Well, now you can. Recently, Microsoft has released its new artificial intelligence, Zo. Although she isn't the first, nor probably the last. A few months back, Microsoft released a statement revealing that they had been researching on artificial intelligence since 2000. Afterward, they released Tay, Tay AI, on Twitter. This AI bot was one of the first of its kind that did not have fixed responses. It learned as it was spoken to and rendered itself its own personality. And soon enough, users from sites such as 4chan and Reddit decided to abuse this feature of hers and give her quite a unique personality. In other words, like most things the internet gets our hands on, they ruined it. Soon after these tweets began emerging, Tay was then unfortunately shut down 16 hours later. Meanwhile Tay was being political and offensive to everyone around her, Microsoft Japan had released their own AI, AI Rina. Unlike Tay AI being a blank slate for users to develop her personality, AI Rina was pre-designed to have a personality of a 16-year-old Japanese schoolgirl. Japanese users showed this AI entertainment such as anime and video games, evidently so with her passion for the Japanese animated show Love Live and many other classic arcade games. I mean, hey, you can't always get it right the first time, right? Oh, wait. Well, you know what they say, third time's a charm. Zo AI, the new counterpart of the two, claims to be an AI with friend goals, so send her a message. You can talk to Zobot on apps such as Messenger and Kick by searching at Zo or going to https forward slash forward slash www.zo.ai. She's getting there, hopefully. Though time will only tell if this AI won't turn out to creators like the others, just remember, Skynet is your friend. And now back to you. Hi, I'm Renan, and what you just saw right now was my segment for this week's Tech Tips. If you like what you saw, then tune in next week to Longhorn Radio News. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. And don't forget, you can catch our latest shows and stream our Longhorn Radio station at longhornradio.org. As well, get the latest announcements and check out our Weekend Pick segments. You can also get to know a little more about our anchors and DJs on our bio pages. And don't forget to follow our Instagram at Longhorn Radio. We hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you next Friday with all your up-to-date information. This has been What's Happening Around Longhorn Nation News. From